Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Level Test Management Certification. We are in chapter one talking about managing the test activities where we are still with 1.3 that is risk-based testing. And today we shall be covering the last segment of it that is 1.3.6, success matrices and difficulties associated with risk-based testing. And we'll try exactly understanding that how we can review our activities related to risk management at the end to see how we can do it better in next time. So as we say that uh, the things which cannot be measured certainly cannot be quantified or cannot be improved over a period of time. So at the end of the day, in this particular tutorial, we would like to talk about those aspects what we can review at the end of the project or maybe talk about those aspects which the testing team should be worried about to make sure that whether our events, whether our acts, whether our activities were effective in doing risk-based testing or not. And certainly look forward to optimize that over a period of time, maybe right from the next attempts, maybe the next project. If in case of Agile, we look forward to optimize this right from even the next sprint as well. Because in Agile, every single sprint has a sprint planning and we look forward to conduct the detailed risk analysis of every single story in scope. Thus, we may certainly have quick discussions to understand that what are those factors we need to review, we need to work upon to make it better right from the next sprint. And similarly for the traditional projects, we look forward to add value at the project retrospectives to see that what we could have done better. And also we would like to talk about the difficulties which we can always face no matter how much ever we try. We'll always have certain challenges in risk-based testing and that is what we are here to discuss from. So this is the context of this particular topic, but let's get into the detail to try understanding further what exactly are we talking about. So to get started, of course, in a retrospective, the test team should measure the extent to which they realized the benefit of risk-based testing. In many cases, this involves answering some or maybe all of the following questions through the use of matrix and consultation. So of course, this can be quantified in terms of numbers, like with different figures, like how many risks we mitigated, how many were residual, what we could not do, how many of new risks emerged, after the initial risk analysis and so on and so forth. So we can certainly have a lot of quantified numbers with us which we can consider for analysis or even having discussion among the experts would also help us to gather the answers of these questions. But the question is, what are those questions we are talking about? So of course the questions are listed here. Number one, were the relevant stakeholders involved or represented in the risk analysis? Indeed. However, we said that we look forward to have the broadest range of people, but we also told you at the same time that it is not necessary that everyone would actually participate. Maybe at some point of time, you would see people pulling off themselves from these kind of activities or maybe not being available at that time when we want to conduct this event. So we, it might be possible that they would have been replacing themselves with someone else and that person may not have been really contributing to this particular process. So we look forward to deep dive and see that whether we really had the real people involvement and was that effective if in case someone else was participating. The next one here is of course to talk about was the involvement of the stakeholder in risk analysis appropriate. The next one is if there have been critical incidents in production that include critical defects have escaped, they have been resolved or not. Because no matter how much ever we try, things would escape uh, to the production or maybe to the next phase. But the point being made is uh, even in the escape uh, case, have we done something about it or not? Like is there things which are still open to be addressed or have we addressed every single open things or not? The next one, of course, we need to answer is where most, most of the high priority defects found early in the test execution or we were late in the life cycle. Because if it was early in the life cycle, we were effective in detecting them early and making it cheaper to resolve them. But if in case it were like more defects were identified later in the life cycle, then uh, we need to do something more about improvising, detecting the defects early in the life cycle. The next one is, of course, was the test team able to explain the test results to the stakeholder in terms of risk. In our just previous tutorial, we told you that we should be capable of uh, producing those results, which talks in numbers and in terms of risk, like what is the quantity of risk? What is the number of open risk? What are the risks which are yet to be mitigated? And what's the status on that at any point of time? So we should even learn about our reporting 
that whether our reports were clear enough to the stakeholders, they were able to understand it, or we every time had to justify what exactly we have done. So we can look forward to improve our reporting factors as well. And finally, did the skip test have a lower level of associated risk uh, than those executed? Indeed, uh, sometimes we do look forward to skip some of the tests due to time crunch, due to time pressure, or maybe understanding that these tests are no longer significant enough to add value. So we skip some of the tests to be executed. But we want to justify that whether these tests which we skipped were really not having any kind of impact on the risk mitigation. And if the answers are yes, certainly we look forward to see that our process, our step of conducting this risk management is very much effective. But if any of these answers were no, or had some kind of reasons involved, we understand we need to do something better to improve our, improvise it. So of course, it's just not about conducting a particular uh, process or methodology or approach. It's more about, is that effective or not? And that's where these success factors plays a vital role in defining how are we doing it, right? And that's where it becomes very crucial for the test team to gather together and discuss with other stakeholders as well. The next important thing here we are talking about is the difficulties and challenges which is associated with the risk-based testing. It says, in most cases, successful risk-based testing results in an affirmative answer for all these questions what we just discussed. In the long-term process, improvement goals for success matrix should be set, along with striving to improve the efficiency of the quality risk analysis process. Managing risk often encounters unexpected difficulties due to complexities and are often overlooked. So indeed, it is a very common thing to talk about that it's not that easy to take, bring things to the track. Sometimes the answers of the questions as we discussed could be very, very yes and very, very supportive. But in case the answers are not uh, uh, really yes, we must find out the way how we can make it better. And those making it better press process would bring certainly a lot of challenges and difficulties. And we would like to bring some highlights to you that what these difficulties and challenges are. So, of course, difficulty in assessing the risk level includes uh, estimating the risk impact and risk likelihood can be very difficult. Solution, use historical data and ask key product stake, project stakeholders for their assessment. So having them involved uh, would make this job easier because having poor assessments could be very difficult and may not be justifying enough. And if they are poorly assessed, we may not put the required effort which we need to put in order to address that particular risk. But of course, at the end of the project, you will be able to figure it out whether your assessment was up to the mark and your efforts were enough to mitigate that particular risk. But the point is, when you detect such things, yes, that's what exactly you need to do. You need to find the right stakeholder and involve right people for the right job. The second challenge what we see is keep uh, keen beginnings and it says setting up and maintaining a proper risk-based test approach is often neglecting in the face of high short-term pressure to succeed. Okay, which is very, pretty much clear that setting up and maintaining a proper risk-based approach is very important and which is neglected and uh, certainly uh, with high short-term pressure to succeed. Solution, of course, regular monitoring and reporting of the risk to the stakeholder will keep everyone informed and see that uh, the attention is being paid and people are contributing to this. See, the thing is, if we don't keep people informed, they doesn't know what problems we are going through. If I have a problem and I don't share it with anyone else, I cannot find any kind of solutions or support related to it. And I might be just struggling with that particular problem. So indeed, it is very important for us to bring it to others' notice or let the other stakeholder know that what we are going through and what exactly we need as a help. And that's where they can come up to support us with all that information, what we may need, or at least to keep them informed that we are somewhere juggling with things which are not so easy to deal with. The third important thing here to talk about is uh, deja vu. And the deja vu is more of like a French word which says that you can talk about something which has not yet happened. So it's more of like seeing the future. Okay, that's an interesting word to talk about, but let's look into that. It says uh, the same set of risks are being raised for each project, which leads to complacency towards risk. And solution is involve the right people in the right, right ad risk identification and mitigate only those risks that are deemed important. Okay, so deja vu is a French word, as I said, that, uh, you know, see the future. It simply means it's more of like you dream of something and that happens in real world. So we foresee things, right? We anticipate 
we uh, predict that this is what the possible things which would happen. But sometimes just these predictions can bring a lot of fake or a lot of fictitious risk. And we necessarily don't have to put our effort on that. For example, if I'm looking forward to drive to a particular location, I may anticipate a lot of things. For example, I may run out of fuel, probably my car can break down, I may have my tire getting punctured, I may get lost with the route. There are a number of possibilities. But now I can filter out these risks with my experience of driving so far uh, or probably going to that location quite of like multiple times. I know that, okay, even if I don't look at the, look on, don't concentrate on the road, I know my wheel will turn automatically right here. And that would have happened with you for sure. And same way that I know I keep consistently eye, there's an alarm which is going to, you know, prompt me that, okay, you know, there's a fuel uh, which is getting short, like getting short on. You can just kind of like get alerted in advance and you can just park your vehicle in a gas station, get it filled. So there are a lot of such things which you get used to over a period of time. So I don't have to unnecessarily call this as a risk and start working on it. I would say, you know what, two things, the route getting lost with that and the fuel is no longer a risk for me. I understand. All I have to worry about is my car is serviced and it is not going to break down on this. And at the same time, I do take care of my tires, the pressure, etc., which I need to worry about. Okay, so that's the things what we need to take care of uh, in terms of deja vu, that you do anticipate things, but don't unnecessarily include things. And the solution is very simple. It says, uh, involve the right people so that you have the right list of things and you only work on those risks which are of deem importance. The next one is key risk are being missed. So yes, at the same time, the paddle thing. So the root cause of this issue is usually due to involvement of inexperienced or inappropriate people in the process. The solution is again, involve appropriate people and do train them in advance. So unnecessary things we try to avoid, but as we try avoiding these unnecessary anticipations, we may even miss out some of the critical things. So we have to deal with both of them at the same time, avoiding unnecessary risk to be worked upon and also making sure that the key risks are not being missed. And for both of them, we need the right set of people to work on it. Whereas the last one we talk about is stakeholders churn. It says uh, stakeholders may change over time and also new risk may pop up. So risk analysis is an ongoing iterative activity and shouldn't be performed once at the beginning. Indeed, uh, as a part of our previous tutorial, we have already discussed that risk analysis is not a one-time activity. You may do it in the beginning, but at the same time as the project unfolds, you will have a lot of other information emerging, uh, the product in front of you, design taking place, code uh, being implemented. So as every single event take place, you have something new to worry about. Thus, it should happen on major milestones to make sure that we are consistently monitoring this and looking forward to those risks which might have come up newly and look forward to address them. And even the stakeholders keep changing. So people, as they change, they may not have all the information sometime from the negative point of view, positive, they may bring some new information for you and you may find new risk as well. So put together, these are some of the challenges which we have to consistently and parallelly deal with along with the existing project and at the same time bring value to the overall success. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. And I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.